to understand the methodology of the suppression of the elder gods, known in Akkadian texts as the Anunnaki, in Essene Enoch as the Anunnaki, and in later Latin Catholic doctrine as the Grigori, one must first be introduced to a brief bit of history. The eldest Homo sapiens skeletons have been found near modern Israel, ancient Canaan, particularly in what is now southern Turkey, just north of modern Iraq, elder Babylon, and ancient Sumeria. This may have been the location of the literary Eden of Hebrew lore, known from Assyrian tablets as Edin or Edin. However, the first wave of civilization came to the Fertile Crescent several millennia later, when the Kurgan tribes people migrated through from the Siberian steppes. These pale-skinned people had been depicted as the blue race of Aryans after having left the Indus River Valley and brought with them on their migration route through the Middle East the high technology of the wheel as well as codified sets of laws. They established walled cities outside of which agriculture was prompted to cultivate the rich soil of the Tigris, Euphrates, and Nile river basins, and inside of which monumental building projects were commenced, initiating the ziggurats of Sumeria and the first pyramids of the Old Kingdom in Egypt. They also had their own set of phonetic ideograms, which were a far more advanced form than the mere pictograms used by the resident herders. Then, as quickly as they had come, these Aryan Anunnaki Kurgans vanished. The Sumerian tablets clearly indicate that there was a war between the people of the western territories in Egypt and those of the northern Akkadian Empire of Iraq with the southern Iraqi Sumerians. However, the Egyptian records of this event, if they ever existed, seem to have been lost. The legend is largely preserved through the later Babylonian Empire of unified Sumero Akkad. There are other records, however, preserved throughout the lands of Egypt, amongst the Hebrews, the early Babylonians, and as far east as India, China, and Japan, which explained the sudden loss of the power hierarchy due to another event, a catastrophic flood. Ample evidence of this cataclysm whether it be attributed to a war in the heavens, as in the old Sumerian records, or to a flood, as in the general consensus of the surrounding areas, exists in the geological record, where we find naturally formed tectites of glass smelted from sand across the delta of the Nile as far west as the Sahara, as well as evidence of a sudden deposit of silt ten feet thick in Iraq, reaching as far north as to the peat bogs of Great Britain. Whatever happened, it seems that something wiped the past slate clean and left the urbanized primitives to begin again without the guidance of their mysterious benefactors. Some of the nation-states maintained the sacred bloodlines of these Kurgan's intermarriage with the native peoples, and these bloodlines ruled more or less despotically, even amongst the nomadic tribes such as the Hebrews, teaching that one day their now disembodied past idols would rise up and return. However, it would not be long until Greek republicanism spawned the first non-bloodline empire, which was responsible for the most severe repression of the royal bloodlines, to have ever occurred before or since. Subsuming the priestcraft of the various nations, such as the Hasmonean heresy of the first Maccabean uprising in Judea, 
as but one minor example. The Roman Empire has established itself as the elite ruling power of the ever more unified planet. The King Adversary is a combination of two titles, little more than characterizing its possessor, failing a nominal identification. The result of this is that, at some time or another, all the preceding demonic rulers were associated with, synonymous to, or held the title of, King Satan. However, as has been demonstrated, all of these figures were, originally, benign characters in the pantheons of conquered nations, or, at worst, vilified people of early history. Thus, it would be overbearing of the student in this matter to conclude with it, having not addressed the real intent behind their defilement. The term Moloch derives from Melech, an ancient titulary term synonymous for all intents and purposes with the modern notion of a king. We have already covered the fact that the term Satan was, in itself, never malevolent, meaning adversary. It carried little more weight in itself than does the modern concept of a prosecuting attorney. An agent, it should not be overlooked, representing the state. In the oldest books of the Torah, a Satan appears as an adversary representing God sent to test the purity of his followers' faith. In later appended works dating from the Babylonian captivity, the Satan begins to take on a character of its own, in opposition not to God's followers, but to the doctrines of God, which, by the beginning of the Christian era, places him as an adversary against God himself. From about the 6th century of the Common Era on, Satan is seen as the devil. So from whence does this concept of the king Satan, and hence the devil, arise? Satan was originally Set, or Sata, of Egypt, the serpent who consumed its own tail and was reborn daily. The dark or underworld aspect of the sun, similar to Apollo's, Python, known to the Hebrews as Apollyon, spirit of the pit. He evolved to become an adversary or judge and appears as one of the Beneha Elohim, the sons of the gods, advising God to test Job in Job 1 6. It was because of the vision of Jesus described in Luke 10 18 that Satan was seen as a lightning serpent. Satan earned his ill reputation only through Muslim interpretation, where he was known as Iblis Shaitan, who led the jinn in revolt against the worship of Adam. This story probably derives from the apocryphal Gnostic Gospel of Philip, which reads, Human beings make gods, and worship their creation. It would be appropriate for the gods to worship human beings. It was to this entity, known to them as Azazel, that the Hebrews released a scapegoat into the wilderness on the Day of Atonement. Being the inhabitants of the promised land of the Hebrews, before the tribe of Israel invaded, following the so-called Exodus, this clan of descendants of the brother of Jacob Israel were seen as primitive heathens and were violently suppressed in the wars to establish an Israelite kingdom. Though the Edomites still existed after Saul, the first king of Israel, they had by that time already been largely dispersed. Despite being descendants of the blood relatives of Israel, through the subsequent intervention on the part of lore and folktale, 
the Edomites came to be representative of the offspring of the fallen angels with the wives of men. As such, they were preserved as having been giants, due to a confusion of the term men of renown. It was held, then, that giants such as Goliath, whom David slew with a single stone, were, rather than as their actual genealogies indicated, the descendants of Esau. Here, the capital cities associated with each tribe, rather than the genealogies of the dukes and kings, as in other sources, is given. These attributions cannot be held with certainty, as they are listed in the given order in the relevant passage of Genesis. However, concurrent to this passage, none of the other above attributes are specifically given. It is only from Savedow that these attributes are transcribed, while the names of the capitals are from the aforementioned other source. Usually, the Etamitish kingdoms are known by the names of their dukes or kings rather than by their capital cities. Furthermore, the name of Moab, a field north of the kingdoms of Edom, is here attributed rather than Seir, the mountain from whose summit Esau himself may have reigned. This, again, is done to stress the fact that these kingdoms existed not only as kingdoms under Esau prior to the Israelite invasion following the Exodus, but also prior to their having been conquered by Esau. It is believed that the kingdoms of cave dwellers, who populated the lands prior to the conquering of Esau, were those to whom the lore and folk tales associating them with the giants and men of renown can be rightly attributed. Thus, it is their pre-existent capital cities, and not the dukes and kings of Esau, which are here listed.